Welcome students. Today we will solve seventh problem on dresses, and today we will learn about method of sections. It means we will solve this problem through method of sections. So let us start today's lecture. So we are given one truss over here, and we are asked to find forces in members BC, FC, and FE of this truss by method of section. We know that whenever we have to find forces in only few members of the truss, we prefer method of sections. So, in this particular question, we have to find forces in member BC, FC, and FE. The very first step for method of section is the same as that of method of joints. That means we have to first see what kind of supports we are given in our truss and then we have to label the reactions provided by those supports. Over here in this particular question, uh, adjoint A and adjoint D, we are shown three reactions in total and supports are not shown. So in place of supports, directly reactions are placed. Adjoint A, we are shown two reactions. One is named as Ray acting in our direction. Second is named as Rex acting towards right. And then we have reaction Ry acting at joint D in our direction. Now the first step over here is that we should identify the reactions provided by the supports in a truss. Then we should find those reactions with the help of equations of equilibrium. So we know three equations of equilibrium we can use for these three reactions. Those equations are summation fx is equal to 0, summation fy equal to 0 and summation m equal to 0. So let us find these reactions with the help of these three equations. So let us apply the first equation summation fx is equal to 0. So let us see how many forces are acting in this truss in x direction. In this truss, there is only one force which acts in x direction, that is Rex. That means Rex is equal to 0. So we got our first answer. Now we will apply the second equation, that is summation Fy equal to 0. In this particular truss, there are four forces acting in vertical direction. These are Ry, 2 kN acting at joint F, 2 kN acting at joint D, and Rdy. Ry and Rdy are acting in our directions, so we have to consider these two positive, while these two forces acting at joint F and E are acting in downward direction, so we have to consider these two negative. It means our equation will be Ry minus 2 minus 2 plus r dy equal to 0. So from here we will get one equation r dy plus r dy equal to 4. In this equation we have two unknowns so we cannot solve this equation. So let us call this equation as equation number 1 for time being. Now let us apply the third equation of equilibrium that is summation m equal to 0. And let us take moment about joint A. If we will take moment about joint A, then we will get rid of these two forces directly because these two forces are acting at joint A and their perpendicular distance from moment center is 0. So moment because of these two forces will also be 0. It means for this particular equation, we just have to consider three forces. So let us find the moment because of these three forces. Let us first observe about the moment of 2 kN force acting at joint F. Now this is the line of action of this force and this is the moment center. So perpendicular distance between the line of action of this force and moment center is 1 meter. And this force is acting in downward direction and it is on the right hand side of the moment center so it will generate clockwise moment. So its moment will be minus 2 into 1. Well, let us observe the moment because of the next force acting at joint D. 
This is the line of action of this force and this is the moment center. So perpendicular distance between line of action of this force and moment center is this distance which is 2 meters. And this force will also generate clockwise moment. So moment because of this force will be equal to minus 2 into 2. Now let us observe moment because of R dy. R dy will generate anti-clockwise moment and the perpendicular distance between the line of action of R dy and the moment center is 3 meters. So moment because of R dy will be positive R dy into 3. So final equation will be minus 2 into 1 minus 2 into 2 plus R dy into 3 equal to 0. So from this equation we will get value of R dy and it will be equal to 2 kN. And we got positive value that means the direction given in the problem is correct. There is no need to reverse the direction of R dy. Once we get value of R dy then we can find value of R dy. For that we have to put the value of R dy in equation 1 and then we can calculate value of R dy. That will also be equal to 2 kN and it is also a positive value. That means direction of R dy given in this problem is correct. So it is acting in upward direction. So the first step under method of section is same as that of method of joints. That means we have to see what kind of supports are there in the truss and what type of reactions they are providing in the truss. Then we have to apply equations of equilibrium to find those reactions provided by the supports. And in this particular problem we have found that Rx equal to 0. R dy and R dy are both positive and their magnitude is 2 kN. So let us remove Rx and let us label the magnitudes of these two reactions. So these two reactions are of 2 kN each. Now next we have to find forces in member BC, FC and FE of this truss given to us. And we have to find these three forces with the help of method of sections. Now the next step under method of section is that we have to cut this truss from a particular section. And in order to choose that section we have to satisfy two conditions. First condition is that section should cut at the most three members of the truss. And second condition is that those cut members must include the members of the truss for which we have to find the forces. Now let us decide section for this particular truss. Now in this truss we have to find forces in member BC, FC and FE. Now in order to decide the position of section for this truss we have to satisfy the first rule. That rule is that section should cut at the most three members of the truss. And then we have to satisfy the second condition that the cut members must include those members of the truss for which we have to find the forces. Now you can see in this problem we have to find forces in three members of this truss. It means we have to cut this truss from this section. If we will do this then we will satisfy both the rules. The first rule is that section should cut at the most three members. And the second rule is that cut members must include those members of the truss for which we have to find the forces. So in this case we have to find forces in these three members. So we have chosen this particular section. So through this section we have satisfied both the rules. So this was the second step in method of sections that we have to decide section from where we should cut the truss. Now after this what we will get? We will get two sections of the truss. This is left section and this is right section of the truss. Now over here we will say that if whole truss is in equilibrium then the both sections of this truss 
should also be in equilibrium. It means we can consider equilibrium of these individual sections also. So what we will do now, we will choose one section out of these two and we will apply equations of equilibrium on that section. So let us pick left section of this particular truss. You have the choice to pick right section also. But over here in this particular problem, I will pick the left section. Okay, so what is the next step then? We have to draw free body of this left section. So let us draw free body of this left section. So how we will draw the free body of this left section? We have to draw this complete left section again. So in order to draw this left section, what we have to draw, we have to represent the, these three members. We have to represent this reaction, this external force, and then we have to show these three cut members. So let us draw left section of this truss again. So we are considering equilibrium of left section of the truss. So let us draw left section. So we have to represent these three members first. Then we will show the cut members. Then we will show reaction at joint A and external force at joint F. After this, we have to label the forces in cut members only. We will not consider forces in these three members which are not cut by the section. So we will only consider forces in those members of the truss which are cut by the section. We have cut three members of this truss. So in these three members only we will consider the forces. And in these three members we will consider forces tensile in nature. Means we have to consider direction of the forces away from the joints. So let us label these forces now. This is member BC. And in this member, we have assumed that force is tensile in nature. It is acting away from the joint. And we have labeled that force as FBC. The next member is FC. So in this member also, we have labeled the force away from the joint. Means tensile force. And we have labeled that force as FFC. Next member is FE. So in that member also we have to label tensile force means away from the joint and let us label that force as FFE. After this we have to resolve that force which is acting at some angle to the horizontal. Now you can see over here we have one force which is FFC acting at some angle to the horizontal then we have to resolve this force into its components. So in order to resolve this force into its components, we have to draw its two components first. So this is the origin of this force. So from this origin, we will draw two lines, one along horizontal direction and second along vertical direction. Then we will label uh, the direction of these two components. And for that, we have to see the direction of force first. The direction of force is away from the joint. So in these two components also we have to label direction away from the joint direction away from the joint then we have to find the magnitudes of these two components so for that first of all we have to find the angle of this force with any of these two components so let us find the angle of this force with the, this horizontal component and let us call that angle as theta it means now we have to find this theta first so let us see where is this theta in the truss. This theta is over here. So we can find this theta by considering this right angle triangle CEF. We can say in right angle triangle CEF perpendicular upon base is equal to tan theta. So perpendicular is 1, base is also 1. It means theta will be equal to tan inverse 1 by 1. So that will be equal to 45 degrees. So we have found the angle of this force with its horizontal component. So this component will be called as cos component and this will be sin component. So let us label the magnitudes of these two components now. So this will be FFC sin 45 and other will be FFC cos 45. So now we are ready with the free body of the left section of this truss. 
Now we know if the whole truss is in equilibrium, it means both sections must be in equilibrium. And we are considering a left section of this truss. It means we will say left section of the truss is also in equilibrium. That means we have three equations of equilibrium which we can apply for this particular free body. Okay, let us start with the first equation that is summation fx is equal to zero. And let us see how many forces are there in this truss which are acting in x direction. There are three forces FBC, FFE, and FFC cos 45. So our equation will be FFC cos 45 plus FBC plus FFE because all these three forces are acting towards right. So we have to consider these three positive. But over here in this equation, we have three unknowns. So we cannot solve this equation. So this equation is not useful for us. So let us apply the second equation. Second equation is summation Fy equal to zero. So let us see how many forces are there in this free body which are acting in y direction. So there are three forces, two kilonewton acting at joint A, two kilonewton acting at joint F and FFC sine 45, which is component of FFC. These two forces are acting in upward direction. So we have to consider these two positive and this external force is acting in downward direction. So we have to consider this as negative. So our equation will be 2 minus 2 plus FFC sine 45 equal to 0. So from here we will get our first answer that FFC is equal to 0. So this is 0. Now we have found one force out of these three. Now we are left with these two forces. And we have one more equation that is summation M equal to 0. Now let us observe at which joint we should apply the moment's equation. If we will apply equation of moment at joint F, then what will happen? Moments because of these two forces will be equal to zero because these two are intersecting moment center F. So then what will happen? In that equation, there will be only one unknown and that we can easily calculate. So we will say summation mf is equal to zero. So let me repeat this step again. There are three forces in this truss, which we have to find. In step number two, we found FFC. And we are left with these two forces, FBC, FFE. And we have to apply equations of moment now. And in that equation, we need only one unknown. Only then we can solve that equation. So if we take moment about joint F, then we will get rid of the second unknown and we can find this value easily. So that is why we have considered moment about joint F. So let us apply this equation now. So moment because of FFC, FFE and 2 kN is directly zero because these, these three forces are acting at joint F. So we are left with only two forces then FBC and 2 kN. So let us observe moment because of 2 kN force first. It will generate a clockwise moment and its magnitude will be 2 into 1. This distance is given to us as 1 meters. So its moment will be minus 2 into 1. Now let us see moment because of FBC. It will also generate clockwise moment and that will be negative. And the distance between its line of action and moment center is 1 meter. It is mentioned over here. So moment because of this force will be minus FBC into 1. So equation will be minus 2 into 1 minus FBC into 1 equal to 0. So from here you will get FBC as minus 2 kN. So minus means it is a compressive force because we have considered tensile force in this free body at the start. So let us find the last unknown that is FFE. 
So we have applied three equations on this free body and we have found FFC, FBC from these two equations. And we have the first equation and if you will put value of FFC and FBC in the first equation, then we will get value of FFE. So in the next step, we will say put the value of FFC, FBC in equation 1. So we will get value of FE. So that will be equal to 2 kN and we will get a positive answer. That means FFE is a tensile force because we have assumed at the start tensile force for FFE and we got positive sign that means FFE is tensile force. So we have solved this problem through method of joints and I hope uh, how to apply method of joints is clear to you. Thank you very much.